Hello and welcome to jasonnewland.com. My name is Jason Newland. This is relaxation, hypnosis for stress, anxiety and panic attacks. Please only listen when you can safely close your eyes. So, I haven't made one of these for recordings for a few days, I think the 6th of March, so it's now the, I think it's the 11th, not that that's like a huge amount of time, but, you know, I go through periods when I do a lot of, you know, regular regular stuff and had a kind of a weird weird time I thought I'd mention not necessarily talk about that but just talk about not giving up because I think with, I guess, I suppose any any kind of situation in life, there's an opportunity to give up, isn't there? If things don't go the way we want them to go. But I guess I'm being more focused here on the mental health aspect of that so my my personal kind of ongoing battle it's not a battle but ongoing it, it feels like a battle sometimes but on the ongoing thing would I guess be the the moods that I have uh, the bipolar as well as the the stress levels and I've noticed lately that I really don't enjoy being around stressful people not that I, I ever enjoyed it, but what's kind of weird about this is I trained as a counsellor. I spent three years in full-time education at university to get a degree in counselling, which basically was me volunteering myself to sit in front of people that had extreme emotional problems, issues. And being able to deal with that and being able to support that person, uh, hold them, not physically, but, you know, emotionally. And now, I feel less and less able to do that. I can still do it, but I feel it. I don't think that makes any sense. I get... uh, I sometimes feel like I'm, I'm absorbing the negative energy from the other person and I don't want to I really don't want, I don't want it and this is a whole new recording from a different recording from the one I was actually going to do but I'll try and get back to what I was going to talk about because this is part of it is I get distracted by sometimes other people's lives and I don't want to be distracted by that at the same time I want to help and it's it's nothing unique to me it's natural isn't it to want to help other people especially those that we care about. 
So where's the line between helping other people and keeping ourselves safe? Emotionally safe. And you may say, yeah, but JJ, didn't you learn this stuff in college? And the answer to that would be kind of yes, to a degree. Because I was able, mostly, to leave the counselling session in the counselling room when I left, closed the door, went home, I left it there. To a degree, but I'm a human being and some things stayed with me, still have stayed with me. And there's one particular, I'm not going to go into any personal details about any clients, of course, but there's one particular person that was crying and I still remember his face crying, I still remember it. And it's, what, 10 years ago? And it's not haunting me, I don't get nightmares, I'm not traumatized by it, but I remember it. And it affected me. And I think it's something about seeing men cry that has an effect on me because I've hardly ever seen a man cry in my life. I think I've seen my dad cry twice. And outside of that, apart from counselling, when I was counselling, I saw quite a few, well, not lots, but I saw men crying, as well as women and young people. But for some reason, it's, it had an, a, a weird effect on me. It was almost like it was alien. Perhaps because the era that I was brought up in, 70s, as a child, born in 1970, boys don't cry. That was kind of the thing. So bottling it up was the correct thing to do societally now look at my granddad he was in a war second world war prisoner of war he went through stuff that I'm never ever going to know what it feels like the experiences he had were awful and something I'll never I couldn't even dream about um, in awfulness Yeah, I never saw him show any emotion the whole time that I knew him. He was strict, he was very calm, and he hardly spoke to me. But he was gentle at the same time. Never saw him cry. Not that I wanted to see him cry, I just never saw any emotion from him so I guess he kept it in because perhaps that was his only way of dealing with it that and also the fact that his generation as well as my generation were even more about not showing your emotions and keeping it in and don't show your weaknesses because it used to be classed as weakness didn't it but it's not weakness. But there's some people out there that still think it is weakness to be upset, to show how you're feeling. I'm not saying that we should all walk around crying all day because it'd just be messy, wouldn't it? It'd be snot everywhere. But to, to, to lock it in, to, to not at least allow yourself to feel it, that seems really, well, it is really unhealthy, not just mentally and emotionally, but physically. It can lead to all kinds of problems, physical, 
as we know stress isn't just it's not just in your head is it it's a body thing because if it was just in your head it'd be a lot easier to deal with because stress affects our body panic attacks it's a physical thing isn't it as well as maybe a racing brain and you know thoughts and all that stuff but it's how you physically feel as well if you took that away a panic attack would be a thought it'd be almost uh, an idea because it couldn't lead anywhere the whole idea you know if, if someone's thinking uh like when I was having, so if I had a panic attack, I'd be thinking, oh, I'm not going to be able to breathe, or oh, I'll feel this. But if it's just a thought and there's no actual physical reaction, it means nothing. Although panic attacks generally don't mean anything anyway, other than perhaps need to pay some attention to yourself be gentle with yourself address what's going on slow down perhaps make changes I don't know it could be different for everybody I know people that have completely changed their life because of anxiety they changed their life if they've perhaps you know, got out of a relationship that wasn't working or they've left their job and got a different job, changed their career, moved to a different part of the country, you know, all kinds of things. And then other people might actually continue with their life the way it is, but do some exercise or do more exercise, learn to meditate, drink less coffee, eat a bit healthier become more mindful learn to say no maybe learn to say yes because that's that whole thing isn't it learn to say no but actually learning to say yes could be quite helpful if you're in a new company and your person sitting next to you says oh bunch of us are going out you know to the restaurant or whatever do you want to come along that might be a great opportunity to say yes but it's down to personal opinion isn't it whatever but each one of us has our own way of dealing with stuff but never give up is what this recording is basically about keep going keep moving forward in fact you don't have to keep moving forward you can stop sometimes you know people climbing mountains they don't keep going they take a rest they have a break maybe go for a sleep overnight in a tent you know it's not continuous continuous the whole time you have to have a break But you're facing the way you want to go. And also, I suppose you need to know where you want to go. Which direction you're travelling in. Without relying on the sat-nav. It's kind of, you know, like t taking responsibility completely. So if you get if you're travelling somewhere, the sat nav breaks or the reception, whatever, whatever happens like there, then you've got a map ready and you can read the map, you know, old style. So making plans. Doing something for when things aren't going so well. Have something like a little emergency kit 
a little first aid kit. I quite like the idea of a first aid kit for emotional well-being. And it could be anything. It could be watching DVDs. It could be having a day in bed. It could be just whatever it is that takes you away from those feelings, gives you a break from it. Not permanently, but a break, a rest. So for me, the idea of keep going, never give up. The keep going doesn't mean you can never stop. And it doesn't mean you can never go back. It just means that you don't keep going back. Because it's like time, isn't it? It's time is always going forward. So we're always with time. We're traveling with time. So we're always going forward, literally. When you think about not giving up, Or when I mention not giving up, I'm not talking about the most extreme case of giving up. I'm talking about generally. Of course, the most extreme in that kind of situation, if someone's giving up on everything, then seek help. You know, in the first instance, talk to somebody and get help, professional help. You're not alone. You're never really alone. I mean, none of us, unless you live in the middle of the desert or you live on a farm 30 miles away from anyone else, you're never physically alone, not really. I mean, I live in this block of flats and I live alone. Well, I've got Andre, so I live with Andre. But even if he wasn't here, there's... Within a few foot from me, there's someone probably asleep downstairs. You know, um, there's another flat across the hallway, another one across the hallway from there. Downstairs, others. Going to the garden, there's another six to 12 people. We're never really alone. We're never far from people. They're always around. So in this situation, it doesn't have to be an extreme situation. Um, But even in a... Any situation where maybe you need to talk to somebody. There are always people that you can talk to whether it's a friend, family member, or actually calling up a helpline. Uh, In England, we have the Samaritans, and I'm pretty sure that most Western countries, at least, have the equivalent. Phone lines where you can phone someone, or maybe you can go online and talk online to somebody. So you're never really alone. Not really. And I suppose with the internet, it's very good. One of the good things, one of the many really great things with the internet is you can communicate, you can be part of something. You can listen to a a live broadcast online. And it kind of connects you in a way. 
to the thousands or maybe millions of people that are also listening to that or watching that broadcast. Listening to this. While you're listening to this, there's going to be someone else listening to it at exactly the same time, very likely. So you're not alone. So by never giving up, it doesn't mean never stopping. Because it's something that I perhaps say, never stop, keep going. Or actually not keep going, but not, not don't stop. But by saying keep going, it almost implies that you should never stop. There's nothing wrong with stopping. It's... I think it's the word stopped, isn't it? I've stopped now. It can mean different things. It can mean, well, I've just physically stopped. You say to me, am I building my website? And I've stopped. It doesn't mean I've stopped forever. I've just stopped for now. Apologies for Andre running around again like he does when I make these recordings. He just comes alive. See, everyone else falls asleep <laughs> when I'm talking. He wakes up. He must find me really interesting. So, keep going doesn't mean not stopping just means never give up ever just generally and never giving up doesn't doesn't mean that because you decided to write a book and then you decide not to write a book that you've you've given up doesn't mean you've given up on everything you just decided not to do that now but you need to keep going in the sense of there's always something else you know the, I could just reel off a bunch of cliches and I guess never give up and keep going it's just that they're cliches aren't they so what other one shall I give you there's the each day's a new day but it's true it's a true it's a truism each day is a new day each day is another opportunity to almost start again it doesn't mean that everything that happened yesterday and in the past has all been wiped out and forgotten because we're living in a real world you know if you if you owe ten thousand dollars yesterday you know you're going to wake up still owing ten thousand dollars it doesn't mean that the stress levels need to be the same it doesn't mean that we need to look at the situation the same as how we did before maybe in a helpless way or some kind of chaotic thinking So I hope you're enjoying the background sounds of Andre eating. I do want to chuck him out the window if I'm honest, but I better not. So keep going and never give up. And there's another cliche, you know, never give up on your dreams. 
Well, your dreams can change. So never give up on your dreams. It just doesn't mean sticking to one thing forever. Otherwise, I don't know about you, but I had dreams when I was a child that I don't have any more. You know, I had dreams that I wanted to go to um, probably China for one one thing I wanted to do, go to China and become a, a Shaolin monk and learn Kung Fu, you know, and become proper proper monk and do that. But I don't have that dream anymore. There was a time when I wanted to be um, a famous comedian. I don't have that dream anymore. There was a time when I wanted to be, you know, a brilliant salesperson. I don't have that dream anymore. There was a time when I wanted to have a ferret that was very quiet when I made recordings. I still have that dream, but it's not happening today. <laughs> so it's not about not giving up on your dreams, like individual dreams. It's about never giving up on yourself and always having a new dream if the old one didn't satisfy you or didn't fill the void or didn't didn't you know I kind of think you know someone was for example I can't do things like martial arts anymore my legs my back you know I just don't have that uh, physical flexibility to do that so if I had a dream for example of being um, if I had a dream of being an Olympic gold swimmer now it's not going to happen I'm way too old or if I had a dream of being an Olympic gold boxer I'm too old I'm physically too old it's an impossibility I would never be considered I wouldn't be able to fight as an amateur in boxing because of my age and also I mean, I've been too old for a long time so I could cling on to that and feel crappy and maybe feel like a failure and you know give myself a hard time or I could have a new dream which means I haven't given up on my dream. It's just a new dream. And at the beginning I was talking about, you know, the... being affected by people that are being... not being stressy, but have got problems in their own lives and... I haven't really necessarily got a solution for that. Um, part of the solution for me would be to keep away from them. But human beings, they're part of life, aren't they? But I'll stick to the script, although there is no script. And focus. I'll give that a, a bit more thought and then come back to you on that one. But because I had a bit of a blip the last few days, I never lost the, the dream. And when I talk about don't give up on your dreams, I'm not talking about dream as in um, it doesn't have to be something so massive so un unattainable 
or life changing. It can just be something that you want to do. Something that you want to experience. So I'm going to leave you on this one. This has been annoying to me because Andre's running around and it's distracted me. <laughs> He's distracted me from what I normally do a bit. I hope it's been a slightly useful, but uh, I need to get rid of that bloody ferret. He's so annoying sometimes. I love him to bits, but... Here he comes again, running around. He's literally running from every part of the flat. It's almost like he's just got this huge amount of energy. And it give you an analogy of never quitting, never giving up. This little furry ball, this little smelly bum, uh, Andre, he never gives up. His persistence is unrivaled. If he wants something, he keeps going for it continuously. And even if he can't get it, he'll keep going back and he'll keep going back and he'll keep going back day after day after day after day. So if, he, if, if there's a door closed and he wants to get through that door, he will keep scratching at the door. He'll rip the carpet up. He'll keep scratching at the door. He'll keep sc- and he'll do it for hours and hours. Persistence. Because I guess his dream in that moment is to be the other side of the door. All he wants is the door to be open. He doesn't like doors being closed. As soon as the door's open, it will come in, look around, and then we'll go out again. Got no interest, really. He just needs to know this, this is his territory, isn't it, I suppose? So he needs to have access to every room whenever he wants it. <laughs> but he's persistent, and he never, ever gives up, ever. Never gives up. So I think I've learned something from him. I think. It's quite a good quality. It's an annoying quality for me because when he wants my attention, as you probably heard during this recording, he will just completely trash the place and make as much noise as possible to get my attention. But there's something quite, I don't know, quite uh, impressive about that, the attitude, you know, the not quitting, the keep going, even though he stops, but he's still got his eye on the prize, as it were. There's times when he wants me to take him for a walk and he will literally be staring at me the whole time. So I'm on the laptop or watching telly. I can see his face looking at me. And then every time I move, like he's doing it right now, he knows I'm talking about him. I think every time I move, I get out of the chair, move about or stand up. He runs out of wherever he is whether he's in a bag or wherever he's asleep, runs out because he wants me to take him for a walk. And sometimes he does this for the whole day. And the other day he was doing it, and he did it again, he ran out, and he looked at me, and he actually fell over because he was so tired. And now he's sneezing. Oh, you've ain't got a virus. 
so he literally fell over on one side because he was so tired and exhausted because he's, he needs to sleep about 18 to 19 hours a day and he was forcing himself to be awake because he wanted me to take him out so although he stopped he hadn't stopped now, I'm not saying that's a good idea for anyone to follow because you all need that sleep don't we but that determination is quite admirable annoying but quite admirable I think to keep going and even though they are cliches every day is another opportunity in fact every second we choose what we do next every second of the day we choose what we say next we don't have to say anything we don't have to do anything the things that we have to do are already being done for us like the heart beating breathing that's just natural stuff we're not doing it we've got nothing to do with our breathing we've got nothing to do with our heart we've got nothing to do with our kidneys or any of that stuff the blood flow hair growth digestion other than you know I suppose what we eat and if we take vitamins and exercise of course that's going to affect it but generally it's all just an automatic stuff And maybe that that sense of never giving up is also automatic. I think it might be automatic in us. And somewhere along the line, sometimes people lose the sense of it being automatic. Maybe and we need to sort of remind ourselves perhaps that we all have a survival instinct in us that we're born with and it never leaves us we just have to make sure that we remember that and keep going no matter what so whatever your dream is in life it's alright for it to change of course it, I'm not giving you permission it's, it's, this is your life but I'm just saying that I know I've known people that I felt disappointed in themselves because they didn't fulfill uh, a dream that they had from maybe being young and they didn't fulfill it and now they feel like they're a failure and instead of thinking well what else can I do? It's never too late to do something new. The opportunity is there every minute of every day to just behave differently, to say something different. Anyway, I'm going to go. All I can do is apologise for the background ferret noises that we do have sometimes on these recordings, but today I think it's been a little bit a little bit more ridiculous um, I feel like I should you know he wants a microphone of his own so he could just eat into the microphone
Mind you, you might do a better job. <laughs> you might do a better job of it than me. So, anyway, I'm going to go. Thank you for listening. And the main reason I kind of made this is just because every now and then I have a blip. I call it a blip. And it's not that I lose my way, but sometimes I maybe forget what's important. Uh, or forget why I'm doing what I'm doing and to me I'm not saying that this is important to anyone else but what doing these recordings that I've been doing since 2006 is important to me and it gives my life meaning so I sometimes forget that so I just wonder what it in your life you have that gives your life meaning and what dreams you have for the future that you're pursuing that maybe the journey and another cliche the journey is more important than arriving so yeah, lots of cliches but a lot of cliches are there because they're true So I'm going to go, thank you very much for listening. And I'm going to try and uh, see if I can sell Andre online somewhere. Some ferret selling website. And uh, speak to you soon. Thanks for listening. Remember to be kind to yourself. Because you deserve to be happy. Lots of love. Bye.